everybody, I have a fun little project here. A Tascam 32 that belongs to a client of mine. He says he's having transport issues, like it starts rewinding okay, and then it gets slower and slower as he gets toward the end. And I have a couple of ideas as to what the problem might be, but we'll look into that in a little bit. And there's also a couple of other minor issues. We'll look into that as well. Transport panel here is sunken into the chassis. So that's an easy fix. Another fairly easy fix is, I don't know why Tascam did this, and I had this problem when I had an 80-8 myself, but if you try to put this in a rack, the reels will interfere with the face of it. So the way this person dealt with it was they put washers and nuts back here to try to act as standoffs. Uh, what I'd like to do is drill some holes in these rack gears to make it automatically sit further forward and not need that. Cap stand's good. Rewind is good. Fast forward's good, stop's good. Up front I'd say the transport functions seem all right, but uh, you know, there, that doesn't mean there isn't a problem under the hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this problem first and then move on to everything else later. One of the annoying things Tascam did was in order to take off the front panel, you have to take off the side panels. In order to take off the side panels, you have to take off the back panel. So I went ahead and removed that. Now I have to remove these knobs in order to take off this front panel. It's kind of a pain to get to this little hex screw in here. But it only takes like a quarter turn to get it loose. So the problem is this is glued in place and over the years this glue deteriorates and I'm going to have to scrape off all this residue and apply new glue. Just remember, anytime you're planning on working on tape machines, you're going to need plenty of alcohol. So what I'm doing here is just applying some Gorilla Glue around the edge because it seems to have the closest consistency to what was here originally. There's little holes here that line up with posts. Okay, just about got that in position. And my Allen wrenches to clamp it into place. And just wait a little while on this. So I'm gonna have to put tape on this and test the rewind function. Make sure that has proper tension and all that before putting it back together. There, see that? That's just from one head, so I suspect the problem is that he's been running sticky tape on this deck. What happens is a lot of tapes absorb moisture from the air, particularly if they were manufactured from the late 70s through early 90s or so. If you want more detail on how to clean and degauss, which is what you should do with any deck before you work with it, and you should degauss every 10 hours of tape to head contact time, then look at my video on the Tascam 22-2. Okay, so I'm going to test the take-up tension here. The uh, manual actually calls for a seven-inch reel, which I don't have, so I'm actually using the uh, inner ring on this take-up hub by itself. It's not exact, but it should be close enough to see if we're at least close to what we should be. That's actually pretty close. Looks good there too. That's good. Fast forward tension's good. I'm just gonna go ahead and test this with a small junk reel I have. Okay, fast forward time. All right, looks good with a small reel. I'm gonna try it with a large reel because I'm not finding a problem here. Eight, nine, Ten. So one way I keep prices low for my clients when they're recording with me or if uh, I'm mixing for them is I buy new tapes on pancakes so there's no real flanges and I have a huge stockpile 
of old reel flanges. The tape was junk, I threw it away. But the reels are actually quite good. Just the fast forward now. This is moving at a nice speed. The deck's actually in remarkable shape for its age and usage. Okay, I have my alignment tape here. I'm going to check playback speed. MRL calibration tape, IEC equalization, at 250 nanowatts per meter. Fringing compensating, one kilohertz. That's within factory spec. That's within factory spec. High frequencies look good. This now stands out from the rack and we can get rid of these. Alright folks, time for the moment of truth. I'm going to record a sweep tone through this at uh, 15 and 7.5 and inches per second and see what my response is. I thought I was done here. I was doing my sweep test from the computer over to the deck here and I noticed that the left channel had a 1, 1 1.5 dB fluctuation and I could tell that the problem was mechanical because it was directly related to tape speed and what it was is the zenith of the erase head was skewed so it was at an angle which prevented the tape from making perfect contact with the record head. So I ironed out all that and it took a good hour to get everything set straight, but it's pretty good now. It's within 0.25 dB, which is not perfect. Uh, that's 16 kilohertz at seven and a half inches per second, by the way. So it's pretty good. If I was gonna get it perfect, I would have to send it out to JRF Magnetics. So the bill goes through the roof for my client. But anyway, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this now. It looks like I am minus 2 dB at 40 hertz and almost 32 kilohertz, so that's pretty impressive. Seven and a half inches per second, we are minus 2 dB at 35 hertz and about 18 kilohertz, so that exceeds factory spec. So the verdict? Sticky tape. I could not find any transport issues whatsoever, which is a good thing because I can charge a maintenance fee instead of a repair fee, so it saves him money and it saves me time. And... I cannot stress the importance enough of using new tape. If you're remastering an older project, you can't help. You have to use what resources are available. And there's a way to temporarily get around the problem. I'll do a video about that in the future. But yeah, in the meantime, if you need to record on tape, buy it new. Don't take any chances. It's better for your deck. It's better for your project. Thank you for watching.